Hello, my name is Chris John Otto, and I am the founder of Belonging House Fellowship and the author of 12 books for artists and creative people. This is a special Christmas edition of our weekly Belonging House Fellowship podcast. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with his espoused wife, Mary, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. God became a man. This is the mystery of Christmas, and it is the heart of the Christian faith. The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory as the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this fact, that God became flesh, so that if we have seen him, we have seen the Father, is the heart of the spiritual war in the earth. The kingdom of God is not a symbolic kingdom. It is a real kingdom designed to supplant the kingdoms of this world until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And this kingdom has a real king, a real king who entered this time-space reality and took on flesh. So much so that St. Luke gives us specific historic events that point to the date the time, and the place where it happened. This isn't a mythological event. The Incarnation is history. One day, while working on research on the church year, I stumbled upon a quote from Hippolytus. He was writing roughly around the year of our Lord 200, and he said that he had been to the archives in Rome and seen the record of the census and the birth of Jesus, based on the details in Luke. And that Jesus was born on Wednesday, December 25th, in the 42nd year of Caesar Augustus. Jesus was born on a Wednesday, December 25th, in the 42nd year of Caesar Augustus. Yes, I'll let your head swim around that. These things really happened and God became a man. And this event is full of controversy. Every year, a new challenge to this event rises up. St. John, in his first letter, tells us, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we saw it and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. 
That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing this so that our joy may be complete. The life was made manifest, and we saw it. This isn't a cosmic metaphor, although, of course, parts of it really are. Further on in John's letter, he tells us that any spirit that denies that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. It is the spirit that diminishes Jesus. Anytime you are told you can talk about everything, but don't mention Jesus, this is what you're dealing with. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Over the years, I've noticed how Christmas is often the biggest birthday party for whom the guest of honor shall not be named. This is the only party where all the guests talk to one another, but no one talks to the host. There is a war over Christmas. Some of it is overt and some of it is covert, but it is relentless and it is political and it will continue until our Lord returns in the flesh. Right after the birth of Jesus, all the innocent babies in Bethlehem were killed. The kingdoms of this world do not like competition. Revelation 12 tells us that not only did the dragon attempt to devour the baby at his birth, but he will continue to make war on us, the children of his mother, until he returns. And we will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb on his cross and the word of our testimony. For those of us who are called to make the word flesh in our lives through art, music, drama, film, and creations of all sorts, this war is very real. A huge part of my daily work is praying with men and women who have suffered at the hands of the Antichrist spirit. Satan hates anyone who can help people see Jesus. Because if you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. And if you really see Jesus, and you really see the Father, you will want to be part of the kingdom. One look is enough. One taste is enough. Christmas is one of those amazing things that you can meditate on and ponder for the rest of your life. There's so many aspects that the Good Shepherd was first announced to shepherds. That Jesus, who is the bread of life, was born in the town of Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. And he was laid in a manger, a feeding trough. One look is enough. One taste is enough. Because if you taste and see the Lord is good, you will not be satisfied unless you have more. God's ways are not our ways. Right now, God is raising up an army of artists to win a global war with the Antichrist spirit. And Satan hates you. But this is how God fights. God is the master of asymmetrical warfare. He goes low. Our enemy goes for the high place, to lord over others and dominate. But our Savior emptied himself and took upon himself the form of a servant and embraced the cross. And because of this, God has exalted him and seated him above every rule and authority. God has given him a name which is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As a boy, I sang a portion of the Ceremony of Carols by Benjamin Britten. The text was called This Little Babe, and I was very moved by it. I recently discovered that the text was written by a Jesuit priest who was martyred for his faith in England under Queen Elizabeth I. The original poem is called New Heaven, New War by Robert Southwell. 
Come to your heaven, you heavenly choirs. Earth hath the heaven of your desires. Remove your dwelling to your God. A stall is now his best abode. Sith with men their homage do deny. Come angels, all their faults supply. His chilling cold doth heat require. Come seraphims in lieu of fire. This little ark no cover hath. Let cherub's wings his body swathe. Come Raphael, this babe must eat. Provide our little Toby meat. Let Gabriel be now his groom that first took up his earthly room. Let Michael stand in his defense, whom love hath linked to feeble sense. Let graces rock when he doth cry, and angels sing his lullaby. The same you saw in heavenly seat is he that now sucks Mary's teat. Ignize your king, a mortal white, his borrowed weed lets not your sight. Come kiss the manger where he lies, that is your bliss above the skies. This little babe, so few days old, is come to rifle Satan's fold. All hell doth at his presence quake, though he himself for cold do shake. For in this weak, unarmed wise, the gates of hell he will surprise. With tears he fights and wins the field, his naked breast stands for a shield. His battering shot are babish cries, his arrows looks of weeping eyes. His martial ensigns cold and need, and feeble flesh his warrior's steed. His camp is pitched in a stall, his bulwark but a broken wall. The crib his trench, he stalks his stakes, of shepherds he his muster makes. And thus, as sure as his foe to wound, the angel's trump's alarm sound. My soul with Christ, join thou in fight. Stick to the tents that he hath pight. Within his crib is surest ward. This little babe will be thy guard. If thou wilt foil thy foes with joy, then flit not from this heavenly boy. May you foil your foes with joy this Christmas, and may the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Thanks for listening. If these teachings encourage you, please hit the subscribe button and share them with your friends. Belonging House is an international fellowship of artists and creative people established to raise up an army of artists who will build Jesus a throne in the earth. If you want to know more, please go to our website, belonging.house. No matter what is happening in your life, remember, fear not, God can be trusted.